No, ready? <clears throat> right, welcome to Crypto MC, guys. My name is Rudo, known as a chart artist. With me is my trade buddy Fibonacci Lee. I caught him off guard. He was still waiting for the intro song and everything yeah. else. So I was like, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like to we like to shake things up, I, I see. Maybe we don't like to shake it up enough, but uh, yeah, welcome guys, welcome um all to all our regulars thanks for the comments if you're new to crypto mc let me know by maybe giving me a triple nine i don't want you to do too much effort just give me a triple nine in the chat well what are we going to do today uh bitcoin bitcoin's been rallying like crazy lee so obviously we need to make um take take stock of what's happening i think there's a lot of people that's wanting to short Earlier today, I opened a poll on Twitter as well. The argument for that was to try and see where everybody's sentiment is. So I'm going to share that poll uh, results with you guys uh, while we're here uh, to try and get an idea of whether we should feel the way we do or whether we should trade what the market tells us to do. So this was the poll this morning. What's your narrative? So we've got about uh, 350 50, guys. 50, yeah, yeah so... I don't know where you guys are at. I see, um, let's see, yeah, let's see, there's more regulars commenting. So, hello, guys. And um, there's a, a new one. You do not qualify, retract that triple nine immediately, buddy. Um, you're a regular. Um, all right, right. Let's, let's, let's dive into this a little bit more. Lee, Bitcoin. Okay, so Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Big question now. Should I take profit? Should I get the hell out? What's your thoughts? What would be the easy thing? I'm a beginner. What would be my thoughts now? Do I take profit? Do I get the hell out? <laughs> There's nothing easy in this game. Right? You have to weigh the pros and the cons. But to me, this Bitcoin chart, as we are looking at it right now, as we speak, is bullish. Okay? is I mean, I have not seen it for the past few months. I have not seen this kind of pattern coming on Bitcoin. Yeah, since, I don't know, since the start of the bear market, maybe. So I am really bullish on that move since last week, uh, Thursday, Friday, we were exactly at this area. I was even anticip anticipating this kind of um, green candle. So uh, from, from this candle here, after that, we had a huge pump uh, on Friday. And from Friday, okay, this was a risky buy. I mean, risky. Um, comfortable buy to me because I mean so many indicators here flashing green buy zone buy area divergences okay uh, it's not just my style of having a huge stop loss like this but this was already an area for to me that saying be careful the trend may change strong bullish divergence um MACD also having a strong bullish divergence with the price and then we had the reaction after this big after this engulfing week. bullish candle I was anticipating that it would be nice to have a green weekend um, especially Saturday, Sunday, because I wanted to see a series of these four bullish candles forming one after each other. And if you look in the past, when you have this series of bullish you know, candles, I mean, it's already the six days today, as we speak. If you close green, we will have six days, one after each other, you know, green candle, one after each other. So to me, this daily time frame, um, you can dive into a smaller time frame. You can look at moving averages. I'm sure that it's 20, it costs 50 on one hour, four hour, you name it. Um, take all those trends. To me, this trend is bullish. And so I have all the reason to remain bullish, to trade with the trend, to, to hunt for the setup, for the bullish setup. Uh, we are just sitting on our hands right now because like uh, I was assuming to get that bullish momentum, now that you missed maybe the bottom buy here, or you have maybe have missed the traditional 618 reload zone you know, buy, um, because if that trend is really bullish, they're going to make the life really, really difficult for those who are, who doesn't have any position. So it's more, more about how would you trade it, you know, in, uh, during this week in order to gain some, uh, to make some money out of this bullish trend. Um, to me, it's really an easy trade to take because there's no question about if you're in a bearish or bullish trend. I'm talking now about intraday trades, right? Um, for me, the, yeah, the trend is bullish. There's only one direction that you need to trade, and it's basically long in the market. Um, short in the market, like I told the team this morning, yes, we have a nice imbalance area. We would love to see an area, um, the price of Bitcoin dropping back to this 20K, 20,005, 20,006 
uh, Rudo, your power candle 50 percent will be around you know i've got an alert here at 20,400 uh, and something that will be the best price that we can get out of this market for bitcoin if the price wants you know the price of bitcoin drop back inside that zone and if you still don't want to buy this level here i don't know what you need you know to to, to take action on that um, on that on those price level there won't be any 100 percent trades guarantee the win you know price can still drop below 18k but at one stage guys we need to make a decision you know what will be your your bullish signals in order for you to act um in this market are you really gonna wait for 14k 10k 8k well in the meantime i'm not saying that we're gonna go to an all-time high from 22,000. i'm just saying that there's a possibility that we're gonna get you know above 25k and if you go above 25k then that will be the bigger imbalance area and nothing you know technically there's nothing that's gonna stop bitcoin to go to tackle the 28 and in a, in a more bullish way or optimism optimism way um around this 33k and then still come back on a later stage uh, later this year or next year still come back to test those 20k level again so yeah at one stage i mean at, I, I would say it's all belief of uh, all comes back to what kind of trader you are and you know how much um how good you are at your at your risk management well there you have it guys lee said exactly what i wanted to say so i've got no reason to continue on to this topic um the goal is simple you want to be bullish when there's some bullish momentum but what i will do is i'll just give a little bit of common sense i'll be devil's advocate or play the other side remember just one thing guys from a bigger point of view this is still the picture we're facing so that is why lee says you know that 32 33 there is the real target that we would want to see there's still a lot of momentum that needs to get broken so the idea is last night i came on and i said to you guys listen we looked at the weekly candle close i highlighted these two levels i said to you guys this level between this and this level over here so between 2188 100 and 21500 is kind of be the area where we want to see the weekly close if we do that you can go bullish and the argument was that your stop limit should be below 21300 now this is your getting in mid move analysis shared it on youtube last night guys so that's why it's important to hit that like hit that subscribe and the notification bell because when we do go live, we do not decide when the market's in the right zone. The market does the decision. We have to sit and wait. You know, I can come on and we can report that through to you guys. So that being said, that's the idea. So now with that, the way we are at this stage, I will not meddle with that stock on a spot trade like this. I will wait and see if price can get to at least 24, 25. So it will take some chop. Doesn't mean that it can't come for a stop and go to that lower areas. Lee laid it out nicely, but I mean, we're going to have to take the market as it goes. Now, a completely different story, unrelated. We're looking at everybody kind of banking on a 75 basis point rate hike. Tomorrow, we'll have more CPI data coming through. And, and that's going to lay the, 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 the groundwork for how they, the trend and what everybody's going to do within the next two, three weeks. Another important date to keep in mind is the 29th of September. So the last time round on the GDP figures, we came back at 0 0.6. So the GDP is turning around. So I think everybody's estimating a GDP figure of maybe 0 0.5 or even a zero or a, even a positive. So these things are going to be part and parcel of that. Now, what can be considered as really bullish and, and, and help us is if we come around with uh, the CPI coming in and giving us an unexpected 50 basis point interest rate hike. That will be a catalyst to excel the price even more because then it means that we've kind of reached our soft landing and at this stage... The interest rates is going to start leveling out. It's going to remain stable where it's at now. And all the fear and all the craziness is behind us. So that's kind of what the hope is. And, and that's kind of what you would want to see 
in order for Bitcoin to have an excuse to be bought back up to 35. So there's the there's the um, the my my 20 cents on exactly that. And to take this over on the DXY, just to yet again to play the other side. Look, guys, we have not printed any reversal patterns of any sorts here. You agree with me there, Lee? Mm. Well, we are about to, you know, if that DXY can yeah, go. Yeah, but it's a little bit more. Trade with about two positions. We take them all. Well, um, look at the, the line charts. Maybe you will see something different. Okay, there's the line chart. What do I see different? Well, line charts, it's already making a lower low compared to the last bullish structure. Yes. No, no, no. And, Just um, on the price action, press action. You know, that, that last move up from there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, make a lower low. Maybe it's this is the break of the the previous um, the structure, so we can go up and then smash it down again. So we're gonna have to wait and see. It's not out of the widget, but can you short this? That's the big question, and that's the question we're gonna try and answer for you guys by the end of the stream. So yeah, sit back and um, and and um, you know hit that like button if this is something worth worth your time, guys. Now one thing just to point out. What we have is high, higher, higher, and we've got an RSI that's showing us that it's definitely doing that. So it is pointing, and this is where, where you're right, Lee, it's almost. But what do we need to see after this divergence? Because we know divergence can get broken as well. Price goes there, and RSI is there, then completely different story again, or whatever the case might be. So what we would want to see is, I would want to see price get at least below this half level. If I look at that area there, and take the top to the bottom, I put a FIB between that area there. I'm just going to say 50% FIB. You can see how significant it is. This is the area where the real determination is going to be whether we're going to win this fight or lose this fight. That's the range we would want to see. So all bets are still kind of off for any relief rally of any sort. Until we get there and fail around that area, maybe shake and then and then go. So there's still a lot that needs to happen. So you can't be blindly bullish. We're not blindly bullish at this stage. The bigger picture trends are still against us. We're merely in the beginnings of it. So just keep that in mind when you go. Ethereum. Ethereum yesterday I said, I want to short this and this is in the sell zone. So um, let me know, guys, if you guys looked for short for ethereum just give me a triple three if you looked for a short lee did you look for a short no the the reason being like i'm i was not looking for short to be honest with you um i mean the guy who's following me on 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 this premium group knows for the past two or three weeks you know got a good week got a a, a, a pretty bad week um, but it was in august and i was looking only for longs you know, from, from the beginning of this drop until um, 17,000, 18,000, uh, in my mind, I'm just targeting longs because I was not in a, well, we already had like a kind of a really good support. Uh, there's, for me, I'd rather been wrong on the, by long in this market than being wrong by shorting this and then miss the, miss, miss the next potential, you know, relief rally. And that's why I don't, and I see those patterns for me. I see those, those shorts opportunity for shorts as well as anybody else can see those you know short area short opportunity and i do believe that one stage so shorts gonna get you know killed and the, the the short squeeze and it's gonna bring the the price and go higher so the strategy so, that i had is because i was bullish i was only looking at bullish momentum bullish setup bullish signals maybe not if i don't see it on bitcoin or on the on the other on some other alts i'll just this discard those 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 assets and i only traded the asset that's you know were a little bit more bullish compared to certain certain holes so i was really selective about you know which altcoin or which coin i wanted to trade based on my personal opinion and bias obviously also following the setup right so lee's trading his remember i trade my own setup i don't trade lee's setups um and that's the the reason why it's so hard being a trader because you need to have conviction in your own setup just remember that guys um i get to be right and i get to be wrong as well and the same for lee and that's what 
makes this so hard. So you always need to understand if you're following or you're looking at copying somebody else's work, understand why he's doing it, understand how he is managing his risk before you do it or else you'll get yourself wrecked. Because if you hold on to certain belief, there's always going to be a narrative, even your own narrative, that might disagree with you. So it's very important for, for that. So let's look at this ETH uh, short setup that I'm talking about. Well, I'm basing this off the fact that this is the, the lateral range and this was maybe the shakeout, the, the phase B, you know, up thrust after distribution or pre-distribution. I'm not mixing up the, the, the names there. But the fact of the matter is this is the lateral range area. And for me, that is a logical area because I've got an imbalance sitting around that range and I've got a resistance level. There's a reason price doesn't, didn't want to get above it. Nobody was willing to pay more for it until it had this unsupported breakout and then everybody's back at it. So it's decision time. Is this a fair price? Is this time round going to be the area where it's a fair price? So it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough call. So all that I would say for anybody that is in that one, look, I said, like I said yesterday, there's two scenarios at play. You take it over here, you have to carry 7% risk. So if you've got a $500 account wanting to short this, you may be only allowed to use about $300, $250 of that. And the other money needs to be left untouched because if you're going to take this and you're going to get stopped out, then this is on a 1x short. I mean, you can go 2x, 3x, means you have to use less money and leave the other money around alone until you can move your stop at break even. This is still the area where I believe that there's going to be a make or break because that's the formation of the supply zone. So that's just something to keep in mind. So for those guys that are in the short, you just need to understand that there is still an upward shake-up potential. And if you want to run a very tight stop, make sure that you don't over-leverage yourself. Now, the only way that you can do that is diving into some smaller time frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the 15 minute. So last night, this is what I said. Well, I saw that we're going to have this pattern forming, this uh, descending triangle, whatever you want to call it. And I said, you guys, you're better off shorting the shakeout. And the key level that I was looking at was this support resistance level over here. And I said, I expect price to chop below this level. Once it's done, that's your argument for the short. Now, you might have got stopped out at that area because there's a, a lot of price action. You might have used this as your area of uh, where you would put your stop limit. But what Ethereum is doing at this stage is giving us a second opportunity. So we can use this trend and almost do exactly the opposite. When we get above this trend, people might think that it's now time to be bullish. And that's going to be the area where I'm going to wait for my short. If I don't get it, I won't chase it. I'll, I'll, I'll reconsider other time frames. Also knowing that this yellow line here is the half level of this whole range here. Between there and there. That's the half level. So anybody that's going to be wanting to get in between this, they're going to start scattering this area with a lot of limit orders. Limit orders is what a market maker needs to start moving the price because there's a lot of promises to buy and sell they can start pricing the market up but if everybody holds their cards to their own with market executed orders market makers can't do much to to, to entice you to get in or out so i believe that this is going to be a, a choppy area for ETH. so even if the short works there's going to be a lot of chop around that area before we start going down so that's the tricky part if we start going above this level We'll probably go and test the same range, and then I'll long that all the way back to the daily. And uh, and that's the tricky part of trading, guys. So remember, like we said, we can call these areas and we can get them in nicely, but at the end of the day, there's always an invalidation. How many of you guys been here regularly have seen us make calls and see them fail miserably? Let me know. Give me a triple seven if you're one of those guys. And then you look at this chart, and I can paint such a pretty picture and say, I called that long, that bottom buy there. I called that bottom buy there. I called that one there. And I called this one over here there. So, I mean, I can sell the narrative that we, we always get stuff right if I filter out the news uh, of the noise. But we had trades in the middle here. We were trying to scalp stuff. And those failed. So you have to understand that when we're in the big picture area, the main structures is where, where it's important for us to take action. 
And currently, we are not in any of those areas. So if you want to be taking aggressive action, I would suggest you sit out, wait for that long that Lee was talking about on BTC. And, uh, and that's it. That's my thoughts well, on I that. Would, <laughs> I would like to add on that one. Don't wait for, for that area. Because uh, no, the problem is when we say buy this green, green zone at the bottom, I mean, how many of you guys have you know, followed uh, the, this, this trade signal? And then the next day we come and say, I, I miss that, uh, that buy area or I miss it by $20. What is my next best possible entry? So we have to you know, um, give you guys a little bit of idea, trade ideas that if you have missed that one, what would be the next, the next area? To me, the next area is here. But we, ha we also have a problem where if it is really bullish and it's going to print like can green candle after green candle, you're probably never going to get this area. Remember this um, 36K, Rudo? How many well, months? you get it. You get it eventually. Yeah, you get it after how many months? <laughs> That's the thing. They were in balance here. I mean, we left the range and we were targeting exactly the same area after how many? One, two, three, four, a week or 10 days of green candle. And we wanted to buy the 36,000K here. In the meantime, price just ran away from us. And then it comes back to this area, but it's like, you know, the, the whole move is, is done, it's gone. Or yes, we, you could have bought 36 and then take profit at 44, 46. But that is, this is all you're going to get if you wait too long for this area. So if you are part of this premium group and if you're listening or watching this show, my strategy and what, what we're going to do with the team basically is to look on a smaller time frame. We're going to probably be dive because we, you know, it's time also to trade now and get, get, try to get some uh, benefit out of this bull run, or this bull run, sorry, this relief rally, <laughs> or this short-term bullish momentum, whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, we're going to try to take trades, even within this area, where we see some, even here, um, bullish divergence in the middle of nowhere, and then take this kind of trade. Getting in here, have a tight stop loss, and take profit right after 22, 3, or you know, this kind of zone. So this will be the trade that we're going to go hunt. Obviously, tighter stop loss, more trade. You risk, you, your win rate also can get affected because now if you put a stop loss at 21.5, you might get wicked out and then price can move a few hundred dollars and do that you know, quite a few times. But the idea is long in this, just in case if the price doesn't want to retrace to the traditional 618, the golden zone that we all know we all want that price. So the idea is if you get stopped out here, that's fine. Doesn't mean that we're going to turn bearish all of a sudden because we, lo we lost one trade on 15 minutes. And basically, if we lose that one and if you lose one or two trades by going, by going long on this kind of uh, area, well, then we know exactly where we want to, to buy our next spot position or our next bigger position because this is the area where all the TA will come together and that gap for the bullish momentum to continue is the best possible entry. So I hope that makes sense. Um, we have identified this area. Doesn't mean that I'm gonna wait you know, a few days or six days or uh, a week just for the price to come back to this area. Um, I assume that if the news is bearish, Tuesday tomorrow will be, or today, tonight, will be one of the best days for the market to retrace and to give us the perfect entry, which I believe it's gonna be this kind of area here. Um, actually, uh, you know what, the, um, the Kingfisher website, is actually giving us even a, a cheaper entry um, where, where all those liquidation level is pointing out in the south, it is 19, 9, 98. So if they want to capture those liquidities and liquidate all those long, um, you know, early longs, we can see on, on the, fish, uh, the Kingfisher website that the most um, the highest area where you have also security here, the stop losses and the liquidation is about 19.8, So if you have, I mean, if I have an opportunity to take a long position and taking advantage of this will be right here at that, at uh, 19.8, 19.7. I wouldn't be in panic mode. I would be actually really happy to long Bitcoin at that price. Obviously we'll stop because you never know what's going to, what's going to happen. Uh, but on a long term or mid term, that's my strategy and short term really to try to capitalize on a smaller move like this when it's going to go up from 21 7 22 um, because if you look at the chart if you're going to wait 20,000 on 19.8 that's already a 10 percent discount 
Okay. So in the meantime, I, for, for Bitcoin to drop like 10%, it can happen within one day or it cannot happen at all within a bullish uh, momentum. So these are all the, all the factors that you need to consider if you want to wait uh, absolutely for that, uh, for that area to, to, to play out. Right, guys, there you have it. So you've got multiple scenarios, multiple strategies. And if you're confused and uh, feel like, well, what the hell is happening? Head over to the Discord. Um, this is the link. Please head over there. They will have the charts posted. Uh, and we'll each have our own narratives on those so that we um, help you guys through that. And then, um, Lee, I think your internet is really dragging. Uh, we're not getting any audio through. Um, and then, yeah, guys, um, just also keep in mind that we do have channel partners. Uh, these partners uh, allow you access to the premium group for free. All you need to do is head over to the Discord and go to the Get Access, Get Premium Access tab in the Discord. Uh, it looks something like this. You click on that little Google Sheet form. And then once that's opened, it's going to ask you for your email. First little step, it's going to ask you for whichever exchange you want to support. Let's talk about Prime today because Prime has got a nice, um, nice, uh, give a nice surprise for everybody. You click on next. And then what it's going to give you, it's going to give you our Prime referral link that will give you access to the premium group. And all you need to do with Prime is just say, hey, this is the email account that I use to open the account. Prime will verify whether the account is on board and everything, and then you click submit, and uh, and we will we will send you an email with your premium access. Now, on the back of that, Prime XBT has uh, has done this where they've got zero fees trading gold, Nasdaq, oil, S and P five hundred, uh, the FTSE, and gas. So if you want to trade something other than crypto because crypto is a little bit too volatile, what we do is we also do charts and stuff on these various assets. Lee likes to do his S&P 500. Uh, I also like to take my stab at the S&P 500 purely because it's, I think, almost easier to trade that as opposed to trying to hit the volatile crypto. Uh, S&P 500 from the last buy zone that I shared with you guys, I think about a week ago, you should be sitting in profit now. So I don't know for those guys that did take the buy zone, we shared this live on YouTube as well. Um, we're hitting profit, take profit areas now. So I'm really happy with that. And if I could have done that without any trading fees, that would have been awesome. Now, just take note, I did come out last week and I say to everybody, I'm premature, prematurely closing this because of the fact that there's a, a weekend. Irrespective of the weekend, my TA doesn't care whether there was a weekend. I got out at this price here at about 40,000, 100. Uh, 40,000 and price went to my take profit. So there we have it. There's, um, there's a nice incentive for us to actually go in and start trading these, uh, um, these trade pairs as well. Uh, Lee, buddy. Yeah, just two happened? words on the S&P 500. Same. Uh, I think we're going to trade this asset as well this week. Uh, <laughs> clearly on a daily chart here, you have like four green candles printing one after each other. Uh, if you can share my charts. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So one, two, three, four, bullish momentum. Um, FIB level now from the top to the bottom here. We lost, I mean, such a two. So the probability of going to the 618, is big. Um, 4158 and that 786 is like 4231. So I would, I would assume that during this week, S&P 500, um, yeah. It's gonna go for this uh, reload zone for the short. So there's still a few, <laughs> few, few nice scalp trade to be to be made. Um, so if you if I have same for Bitcoin, if I have any retrace this afternoon, tonight, or tomorrow, you know Tuesday, I will definitely uh, go and hunt for longs inside this area and target will be you know inside that zone 40, 41, 58, and forty two twenty seven. Righto, guys, that's all I want to share with you today. Um, I want to thank you. Lee, your internet's really bad, my friend. Uh, because I'm, log I'm logged in as an admin on that stream yard. It's not about the internet. There you have it. So uh, we're going to have to get you, get you off of that. It doesn't seem to want to work. I just want to answer near, nay. 
Jane. Is it the month of free access? Um, yes, I mean, depend on different exchanges, and different partners, um, you know, uh, conditions. But if you if you if you read those conditions, you can easily easily accumulate up to three, I think, three months, three or four months of free membership. Yeah. So um, use it to your benefit. You know, open multiple ones, even if you then because they're not KYC accounts, uh, exploit it. That's basically what I'm trying to say. There's something. Uh, you know, the way that the exchanges see it is um, the more signups they get, the better. But if we can get you to, if you want to exploit it to keep on getting free access, so be it. Uh, I'm looking at this comment here. Uh, like the tweets, but signals on Discord first, please, with the link to tweets. So less time consuming the attention. Uh, yes, that has been always been the case, buddy. So just to, just to show this, maybe you've got the channel muted. Uh, we've got this media alerts channel which basically pushes out each and every tweet that I, uh, both Lee and myself, make when we make it. So you're more than welcome to just go and have a look at that. That's the, the reason for the Media Alerts channel there. And uh, you can go through that as well to just check it up on that. Uh, other than that, I want to say thanks a lot. Uh, BTC tracks all markets up, so it's difficult to short right now. Yes, that's something, and it's well, well said. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, Bitcoin is the rising ship. It's like the rising tide that rises everything. Uh, but you do have the outliers that might be moving in a completely different way. I see Lee has got a completely different stream going on his side. And uh, he's busy having his own conversation there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's void of me. I can't hear anything you're doing or saying. Lee. Uh, don't pay attention to those uh, to the video stream. I can see my, the video is lagging, but hopefully the voice is not lagging. Okay, yeah, that's better. And that's it for me. Voice. I mean, to close this, uh, bonjour la France. I'm happy to see somebody, uh, you know, tuning in from France. Hello, G uh, JC. Yeah, that's it for me. Let's see uh, what Mike is going to give us tonight and this week. Pretty excited. I think we're going to have an easier... Look, August was a difficult month to trade. We knew it. I think, you know, September's. We mustn't be like um, petrified about thinking, you know, September is going to be the same as August. Luckily, there's only like one, one bad trading month and then trading is going to get also much easier as we go. Um, yeah. From now on. This will be the weirdest YouTube for anybody that's watching because my lips aren't moving and somebody's talking. Right, guys. Let's <laughs> leave it there. <laughs> Just everybody as always keep hustling. Keep hustling. Sure, I nearly blew out everybody's ears. Cheers, guys. <laughs>